All right, gentlemen. I hope you're ready to do this because we're doing it. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So this morning I'm joined by Dave Bellini, Steve Wise. Super excited to have you both here. And we're going to talk about passwords and we're going to talk about password boss. I'm Great. pumped. Good. Um, so, so I think it's safe to say most people know Dave. Dave, you, you worked for uh, a small company uh, out of, out of uh, Tampa area, right? That's right. That's where they're located. And it, it's called ConnectWise. And yes. I believe that there's also an MSP that is or was associated with ConnectWise. Yeah, we, we had uh, uh, Arnie and I owned an MSP originally with the same name, ConnectWise. Uh, when we sold the company, the software company to Tomo Bravo, we did rename the name, uh, our, our MSP, which Arnie and I still both own, is uh, Connect On. Uh, so we still own that MSP. So we're still in the MSP industry. Very that cool. MSP is one we set up back in 1982. So it's been around for a long time here in the Tampa Bay area. That is a long time. So, um, not to make you feel your age or anything, but I wasn't even alive when your company was started. <laughs> <Okay>. That's <laughs> that's making me feel old. <laughs> but I, well, I, it shouldn't. Fair, it should I, make you feel wise. Well, it does. It does, and and I can tell you that it's like I remember my dad telling me I got tires older than you, and I, you know, now I think about it, it's like, oh, I bought this tie in 1991 or something, you know. And it's kind of funny. I do have ties that are older than a lot of my employees. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm not a tie person, so maybe someday. Well, I have uh, ties, and they just sit there now. No one uses them anymore. I, I when I lived in London for quite a while, it was ties were still a big deal. Yeah. Hmm. Now, now, Steve Wise, I feel like I've heard your name before. You even look familiar. Have you been around the industry before Password Boss? So before Password Boss, I actually ran an MSP as myself here in Minneapolis. So started it and ran it for about nine years and sold it a few years ago. But, uh, you know, I've been in the channel and in the space for quite a while. Very cool. So so now now we've got Password Boss. And, uh, you know, the, the good news is everyone's working from home. So nobody's going to think less of you guys for, you know, working from home, telecommuting, uh, you know, Dave being in one state and Steve being in another, um, you know, but maybe a couple years ago, people would have been like, whoa, they don't, they don't have an office that everyone just goes to, but, oh no, it's great. Now everyone's finally accepts the fact that we can all work from home. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, oh, I, wow, you know, this is I revolutionary. Laugh. I know, I laugh at that because I'm I'm one of the dinosaurs. I, I gotta be honest with you, I'm struggling a little bit with uh, not coming to an office. You know, it's yeah. kind of like that was part of the fun of you know building and growing a business was actually having an office that we all kind of gathered at. Well, but I'm, hey, other, you know, I'm on the other side of that too because I've been working from home for about twenty years. Yeah, really. Steve's been at it for a long time. And, yes, and we have to change. Uh, we have to change to the new norm. Uh, yeah. I do believe that 30% of the people will never return to the office, even after the vaccine. Uh, you think it's and, that and, low? I think uh, it's higher. You think it's higher? I, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm betting on 30% because I think, you know, I think there's a lot of nonverbal communication that just goes on at the, you know, at the water cooler, uh, accidental yeah. collisions, I'd call them, and I think. There is a lot of value in that, uh, but I also think there's, you know, certainly we can get more done when we don't drive, you know, a half hour to work and a half hour home and, and uh, having to walk, you know, two blocks to the other building, the other conference room, you know, it's, it's, there is definitely economies of scale of working from home. That's why I think, I think there's going to be a certain number of roles that will stay home. I do think there'll be some type of, you know, hey, uh, support you come in on Friday, every other Friday, or come on every Friday you come into work. So I do think there has to be some togetherness mm -hmm. um, because we're humans. 
and we're meant to be in tribes, you know, and yes. I do think that that component of it, you have to be careful that you don't lose that because everyone will become disconnected and, and then they're no longer part of a cohesive team. I agree with that completely. I like it. We'll All see. Right. But I'm saying 30%, uh, Steve, you, you, you're you saying what's your number? Coming back. I think it's going to be closer to 50. Okay. All right. Well, we'll have to reconvene in a year and see who's closer to being right. I, I mean, hey, I'm not going to lie. I would love to be right and wrong because I agree that there's the uh, tribal component to this. Um, and I, I am feeling it, you know, I'm, I'm like missing people. Uh, and I, I thought I was an introvert and apparently I'm not. So it's, it's definitely been an eye opener these past, you know, nine, 10 months, however long it's been, you know, 20, 2020 was a hell of a decade. Um, so, so yeah, this, this year I'm, I'm hoping for, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping for things to start feeling normal again. Not, not necessarily, I'm, I'm not saying I'm hoping to go back to normal because I don't think we'll ever get back there. But I'm hoping for things to start like feeling normal to where uh, I'm allowed to have friends and have people over and, you know, not be shunned if I- Well, I can go sniffle. visit my mother. Um, my 87 yeah. year old mother, you know, I used to visit her every week and now she's like, yeah, don't come over anymore. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. So, so talk to me about, about password boss. Cause you know, I, I heard about password boss a while back and, um, you know, I checked out the website, you know, back then, and it was probably, I don't know, six, 12 months ago. And it looked very much like, I'm going to just say last pass competition. Um, and not that, not that that's a bad thing. But, you know, I, I use, I actually use LastPass families for my family. So we, we've all got our own little LastPass account and uh, we, we've got some family sharing amongst us for, you know, my wife and I can do the, the bank accounts and all that with, without messing things up. Um, so, so when I think like, you know, LastPass competition, I think very consumer driven. And I think that might even be what Password Boss was at one point. And and now that that you guys got involved, it's it's completely flipped, and and now it's really driven toward the MSP. So so talk to me about that a little bit. And and Dave, I don't know if you notice, you're like half off the camera. Oh, there there you go. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> now now you're like centered. <laughs> It, oh, it cuts off the the thirds on on either Sorry, side. It's not it. on my perspective, but okay. That's so Thank weird. You. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe it's just my perspective. I don't know. Um, so so talk to me about um, what why password boss? What password boss really is to us MSPs? And we'll go from there. Steve, I'm gonna. I'm going to defer that question to you, at least the beginning of it. Yeah, so when we started Password Boss about six years ago, um, we started out with a consumer product because, you know, solving the, the password challenges that are out there, on the surface, it can look like a pretty simple problem to solve, but it's like an onion. Every time you turn around, there's another layer you have to peel back and another set of problems that you need to solve. And before we could bring the product into the channel, it needed to be stable. Right? It needed to have full functionality. We needed all the features to work. It needed to work virtually everywhere in the air. And that's just a process that takes time. And bringing a product that isn't fully baked into the channel, you know, you're only going to get one chance, right? Um, so we initially, you know, we, we, the channel was always the end goal, but we knew we had to have the product up at a, you know, at a very high level before we could bring it into the channel. And we came in through a consumer product, we grew that into a business product, and then we grew that into the MSP product that we have now. And as we do that, we're diminishing and de-emphasizing all of the other direct sales that we do because we're focusing very heavily on just the MSP channel. I see, okay. Yeah, and I, and I would say, I'd add to that, uh, Steve, that um, you know, when we came in, we made an investment 
in Password Boss in October of last year. Um, that was our emphasis was to really kind of me being an owner of an MSP for the last almost 40 years now. I can tell you that, you know, I sold Novell Networks and way back in the day. And, and I remember not wanting to give away my end users, uh, my customers' names to Novell because inevitably within three or four years, uh, CompUSA was sending out emails to them saying they could take care of their Novell network. And, and so we want to be very, very MSP centric and loyal to the MSP, you know, so we feel like GlassPass, um, you know, they have a direct component. They will go directly to the, you know, to the small business and sell to them through a whole lot of different channels. We're not going to do that. We're going to be very, very loyal and we won't resell uh, the product against um, our MSP base. So we'll never be competition. We won't ask for the end users' names or contacts. So I think that's because we're MSPs, we respect the needs of an MSP um, and the fact that, you know, it's important to align yourself with uh, companies that are not going to compete against you. Excellent. Very cool. So, you know, I'm just going to keep uh, picking on LastPass, and it's only because, you know, I, I could say one password or, or any number of other, other tools, but I think LastPass is the most, like, industry-recognizable tool. Um, and I think we can all agree that LastPass is a great product. So I don't think I don't think any of us are saying that LastPass is a bad product. Do, do we all agree there? At least. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a solid tool. Okay. Um, your yours is. Well, just I've never better. used it, so. so. <laughs> yeah, I've never I've never used it, so I don't really have a basis for it other than the fact that you know I I know of it. So so that's interesting to me. Um, only because password managers, I feel like they've been around for a while. So, what have you used before Password Boss? Uh, you mean at me personally, yeah. on my personal level? Yeah. I'm embarrassed to tell you, but uh, yeah, I used, I had it, it was in my notepad on my iPhone, all okay. my passwords. So, I, you know, and I, I can tell you that when I've kind of asked all my peers, not necessarily in the MSP industry, but other business owners, um, you know, what it, you know, they've got it in spreadsheets. Uh, mm -hmm. They have it on Notepad, like I do. Uh, some of them are sticky notes. Some of them are, they have a USB that they walk around in their pocket with all the time. So it, it is not as clean as maybe you and your family are. Um, I would say that you guys are kind of much more mature when it comes to you know your password protection. Oh, let me tell you, just because it sounds like we're doing a good job doesn't mean that I don't catch myself using like the the hardest thing. The same one. The, the hardest thing is is when um, when you go to like sign up for a website and you're on like your iPad or your iPhone and it's like, well, I don't want to use Safari's password tool because I don't want to have uh, segregation of my passwords, but it's not convenient for me to just, you know, create a new password with uh, my LastPass tool on a mobile device. I have to go into that app and make the password and then copy and paste it in this. So, like, so no, I'll just type in my, my usual, which, uh, you know, eventually that's going to bite me in the ass. I know it. But I, I will eventually log into things from a computer and change the password. But for that couple of days, uh, it, it stresses me out, man. <laughs> and then we actually fix that problem, Steve. So on our mobile apps, you can create the passwords directly in Password Boss and put them right into the website. Oh. You don't have to do what you're doing, right? Yeah, you know, you're doing a two step. We, you know, that's not feasible in the long run, you know, especially because I don't know if you, I think you've recognized it, Steve. I know I certainly recognize it myself. My number of portals that I, my, my internet identities that I have to log into 
has probably doubled in the last two years as far as the number of sites I'm going into, you know, between my daughter's school, you know, all the bank accounts, uh, stock stuff, um, my HOA at my condo, you know, there's, there's just so many logins and I have to keep track of them all. And you're right. I have one, my one generic password that I use and I have to really, really, you know, the, we have figured out the most important thing with a password is to make it a long password. That's, you know, all it's, it's someone with an IQ of 160 couldn't look over your shoulder and memorize it because it's 28 characters. Right or longer, you know, so that that is the concept and password boss will actually produce the password for you and uh, then save it and log it so that you don't actually have to ever remember it. Yeah, and and the other the other thing that drives me batty is, you know, I'll, I'll make these long, you know, 30, 40 character passwords and then like I'll, I'll end up at a client site and I'll be setting up a new computer there and I'm like, oh, you know, I should log in and download my RMM agent. So, so here I am with like, you know, my my phone in my hand. And I'm like hunting, pecking this this 40 character password with <laughs> with you know random symbols I never use. So I have to figure out where they are on the keyboard. Like, what what's a carrot? Like, <laughs> so, and then and then you know it takes five tries because you know you messed something up the first four times or you know you, you capitalized too many or not enough or whatever. So. Um, yeah, so, so, I mean, I get why people just will use the same password over and over or, you know, just use like password one, two, three, because it's, it's so frustrating to look and try and, and type this nine cents in, especially when you're at a device that's not your normal device. Exactly. So, so let's, let's talk about, I'll, I'll call it some some nitty gritty when it comes to password boss, because I, I know that there are going to be some people that go, Oh, password boss. So is this, is this going to be like pass portal where I'm able to like sell it to my clients? They, they can keep information in there. I might be able to see it. Like if I wanted to help them out, I can get into their stuff and do, make, go. Steve, why don't you go with that one? Yeah, so the, the architecture from Password Boss is different, right? So the, the, the underlying architecture is called a zero knowledge architecture, which means that we don't have access to any of your passwords. You don't have access to any of your customers' passwords. You can always share anything you want with somebody else, so you can facilitate that. But just by the nature of a user, uh, one of your customers, for example, um, you don't have any access to their account, right? You can you can manage the account, you know, the subscription, that sort of stuff, but you can't see what's inside of it. And that's that's the architecture that's built all the way through the platform, so that there are no backdoors. There's no extra secret keys. You know, we can't open up your account if we need to do some troubleshooting. We just can't do it. I mean, your passwords are locked up and they're secure. And Very that was cool. really the, the, the line we had to tow to, to really make a secure product. Very cool. The, you can share, though. I mean, the, the concept there is the if you have customers, the MSP has customers, and, you know, they want to share those 10 passwords, the servers, the firewalls, uh, the Wi-Fi, all the normal MSP uh, responsibilities at a small business, they're sharing those. Now, they might have another 80 passwords, like, you know, obviously as an MSP owner, I don't want uh, a pay, I don't want access to their bank accounts. I don't want access to individual users' uh, active directory. You know, I don't need or want any of those things, but certainly they can share them if they need to at any time with us, you know, share them up to us. Uh, but yeah, it it is, that's kind of the beauty of it is we're all kind of under the same type of tree. So we can kind of share with each other as little or as much as we want. I like that a lot. So are, are you currently or planning on offering um, additional features where maybe you'll be 
again, like Pass Portal, where they started adding on, uh, I think they call it Ocular for for the documentation piece or or like IT glue or you know that type of stuff. Yeah, that's not in our on our roadmap at all. I mean, we we are planning on doing integration with the likes of LineGuard and uh, some of the other products that are out there in order to you know we we feel like the most important thing we can do is be the best at being a password vault. Um, we think there's a lot to that, and we think that's going to get more complicated as the years go you know come forward uh, with all the two factor authentication and uh, being able to align ourselves with all those different companies. But, you know, uh, you know, 20, 30 years from now, the concept is, I don't know how long it will take, maybe it won't take that long, but no passwords. Uh, we don't see that any time in the near future, but, uh, you know, we will be aligned with all the technology that allow us to do those type of things. So the one thing that's, that's always kind of bothered me about some of these other tools, um, maybe a documentation platform that's a little sticky, but I won't name any names, is that if you were to um, become like a master agent or a reseller or whatever you want to call it to where you are selling IT glue to um, other MSPs, um, you actually have access into all of their vaults. Every one of those MSPs, you can access their vaults. What What are your, and, and I understand if you maybe don't want to respond, but I am curious, what are your thoughts when it comes to um, software solutions that are that are doing this? Like, don't, don't you see a problem with them providing that level of access? Well, you know, certainly what... Steve just mentioned on password boss, that's just not possible for right. us. Everything is fully encrypted up on the cloud. You know, it goes to the cloud because that's how we, you know, distribute the database to all the other devices you have and, and the sharing to all your customers, but it's all encrypted up there. And the on encryption only comes down, you know, down on the devices. So I would tell you that uh, at ConnectWise, you know, obviously, you know, we had, I don't know, probably about 10,000 MSPs uh, at the height there, and I'm sure they're much bigger now. But, uh, you know, did we have access to a lot of, you know, most of the uh, MSPs, ConnectWise databases? Yeah, uh, they would control, you know, towards the end, uh, MSPs would control that. They would, you know, grant us access to be able to get into their database if we were servicing or supporting them. They would give us access to the app maybe for a three hour window. And then they would close it out and, you know, they had the logging and all like that. I think that's a necessary evil when you have some of these applications in order to do the support. Um, you know, certainly I think it's in the vendor's best interest to make sure they, you know, give you 100% assurances that, you know, they're not going to take the data or use the data in any malicious way. And we kind of see that right now with the Facebooks and uh, you know all these different social media platforms kind of harvesting our data, not necessarily in a, in a malicious way, but in a capitalistic way to take advantage and make money. So I, I, I know that these larger companies usually in their contracts will have some type of you know, statement saying, hey, we're not gonna use any of your personal data for any reason right. whatsoever for any you know, gain or uh, and I think that's important that you read into those contracts to make sure that's going to happen. I, I don't know how if there's a way around that for an IT glue. Uh, you know, I think in order to do the support that they need to do, they're going to have to have some access to those databases from time to time. Now, it can be a limited access where we allow them in. You know, one of the great things on, uh, on Password Boss is we do have limitations. We can hand over a password to the vendor and leave it on for 24 hours and it automatically will expire. So, I mean, I think that's some of the advantages is, you know, I have an administrative assistant. I needed to get a whole bunch of my uh, healthcare, you know, with United Healthcare fixed up. And, you know, I had to, you know, I had some bills that were unpaid and I thought they should be paid by the healthcare provider and well, not the healthcare, but the, the insurance company, the health, health insurance. 
And uh, I had my administrative assistant go in there, gave her a window of 42 hours, 48 hours, and she was able to go in there and fix everything. And then it expired. So I kind of like, you know, I can go in there and change the password afterwards. Or I usually, in this particular case, I granted her the password without her actually being able to see the oh, password. That's cool. She was just able to see the login with the password being you know, actually blind to her. So she was able to log in, access everything, get everything fixed. And then was, you know, uh, expired after 70, uh, 48 hours. No, I, I just want to say, though, that in my in my past experience, that's not always foolproof because um, a, a couple of things that people can kind of do to, to get around that. Um, one, if they're using like Chrome or Firefox and they turn on the passwords uh, feature within the browser, the browser will then say, do you want me to save this password? And then you can hit yes, and now you can go into your browser's password manager, and then you can look at the password. Oh. Or if if they hit the button in password, I'm just saying password boss, but I've never actually used password boss. So if, so if That's they fine. hit the button in the password tool, um, <clears throat> it'll it'll paste in the username and password, but it, it might not automatically hit login for one reason or another. Now they've got the, the little eyeball because people now have 40 character passwords that they need to type in correctly. So then you can click the eyeball and see the password. So I, and, and the only reason I bring that up is because I don't want MSPs to have this like false sense of, oh, nobody will ever see this password ever just because I, I checked this box to grant access without letting them see it. Like there are ways around that. Yeah, and to your, to your point there, Steve, the, the, when when you grant somebody a password and password boss and you mark it as they can't see it, we actually pop up a disclaimer that says what not see it means. Yes, good. So that, mean, that means it's actually not visible in password boss, but once it leaves password boss, it's really out of our control. And you know, some of the some of the things that you've mentioned in the browsers, you know, that that is that's a shortcoming of just the internet in general and how how the the HTML and the browsers are, browsers are built, but within Password Boss, we do keep it secure, so it's not visible. You can't copy it. You sure. can't mask it. You can't do anything. I I love that you have that disclaimer. That right there, um, that already just makes me makes me love your product because you're you're just reminding people, educating people that. Um, Hey, like we won't tell people, but that doesn't mean the other tools they're using won't tell people. So right. don't be stupid. Like that's sometimes you just need to tell people that. Don't be stupid. Like <laughs> um, all right, so so let's talk about how to sell password boss because I think we all have kind of a grasp on what it is. It's a password vault. We as MSPs are, are purchasing it and then reselling it, right? Yeah, yeah, we think it's part of the security stack in the future. Um, we would say that maybe, maybe 10% of the mature MSPs are doing it in some form now, but most MSPs are not. Uh, most MSPs are, you know, not you know it's it's work uh, that they don't necessarily want to do because their managed service you know, fees are, are, are the same every month and they don't want to add into that, anything to that stack. So they have to support more things. But we do feel like this is an important uh, component that needs to be added. But we think that you can add, you know, we're, we're not suggesting a whole lot. I mean, we think we can, you can charge $4 per user per month at your customer. So a small business that's, you know, 20 employees, you know, yeah, it's going to cost you an additional $80 per month to have a, you know, a password vaulting system that your MSP is intimate with because they're using it themselves. And that way there's, you know, support on that to help people out if they're having issues and things like that. But we think that uh, the vaulting, a password vault will be just as every MSP has virus protection on every single device they manage. We feel like you're gonna have a password vault for every user that you're managing as well. We just think it's inevitable. And uh, it's just a matter of time, and we think that will probably happen over the next five years. It's kind of surprising that it hasn't happened soon. Well, I mean, it, it kind of has. Like, it's happening slowly, and I, 
I personally think the reason is um, some of the tools are like an afterthought. So, you know, like IT Glue, fantastic documentation platform. Then they added MyGlue, and it's like, it's good, but it's not. It's it's not up to par with like a LastPass or a One Password or or any of these major players that have been around doing nothing but password vaulting for you know a decade or more. Um, so the fact that you guys have been doing this now for six years. Uh, that, that tells me that one, you, you guys have some experience in this. You've, uh, Steve, I'm sure you've taken some time to maybe look at, uh, some of the popular features that are, are most commonly requested to competitors and, and that type of stuff and, and started to bake that into your own product here. So, and, and I'm sure that you've got, uh, browser plugin for all the major browsers, which I think some of these other tools are lacking. You know, they might have Chrome, but not Firefox or vice versa or, or whatever, you know? So I, I feel like you, you guys are already gonna have a leg up over some of the other tools that maybe aren't only password vaults. And that was maybe, a, hey, let's start offering this too. Yeah, and kind of to what I mentioned a little bit before, is it, Solving the password problem is just incredibly complex. Mm -hmm. uh, it's there, there's so many nuances and permutations and different ways and processes that people use and share and access passwords. That initially, again, it can look like a you know that's a simple you know we can knock this out in a few months, but it, it's not the case because the deeper you get in, the deeper you see the holes, um, and they're just you know it's just a really vast sort of product because it's a really big problem to solve. Mm -hmm. So the fact that a lot of other companies have got kind of really of a more of a surface level sort of password tool um, really illustrates the issues with creating a full featured tool because it's really hard to do, right? You know, all the browsers, all the websites, all the apps, all the, you know, even the, the things that we're doing, PSA integrations and you know, logging into remote servers and stuff that uh, a lot of companies still don't do except us. Um, so it's, you know, it's a, it's a big product because it's a big problem to solve, which also highlights why a lot of other companies haven't done. Absolutely. So, so let me ask you gentlemen some tough questions now. Um, I, I know you said that you recommend we sell it for $4. I would like to think that as MSPs, you're giving us a healthy margin there. What, how, how does the pricing work for MSPs? Well, for, I would say it depends on the size of the MSP. Obviously, you know, oh, the more oh, volume, the lower the price from us. But generally, we're looking at about a dollar. You know, we're going to probably charge about a dollar per user to the MSP. And the MSP can sell it for as little or as much sure, as they want. Sure. You know, we, there is, we're not going to, it's it very much like they do with virus protection now. And I, you know, they get the virus protection at a, you know, it's a, it's a healthy two to 400% mark, markup for 75% margin on, on a password tool is, is good because, you know, there, there's going to be a little bit of support maybe in the first month or two. And then after that, it's, you know, as you scale, it's it's almost like free money. <laughs> um, so, well, and you're and you're securing you're you know you're you're securing oh, your customer, uh, making sure that yeah. I don't know about you, but at my MSP, each year, usually towards the end of the year, uh, sometime during audit season, uh, a customer, a small business customer of our MSP, will show up and say, "Hey, uh, my bank." You know, I got a big loan with my bank, and so their auditors are coming through to make sure that I am secure and I have everything in place so that my company, my small business, isn't breached. You know, creating a you know ongoing concern problem where I can't pay back this giant bank loan that I have with them. And so us as MSPs are signing these documents saying, "Yeah, we have firewalls and virus protection. We have all this security in place." So, you know. Mr. Small Business here is 100% covered from any type of, you know, security dis you know, disaster, 
And we sign off on that on that document, on that audit report. And I know that that was fewer and far between. It was becoming much more, uh, you know, each year it's more and more customers who, who are having their banks have us sign the audit papers or their insurance company is uh, issuing some type of audit that we have to sign and, and uh, guarantee, not guarantee, but, you know, it's to our best knowledge, this small business has the right, best practices in place to make sure they don't have an ongoing uh, concern problem with this business. So I think you're seeing more of that. And as that, that filters down from the fortune 500 companies, all those SOX requirements are coming down into the small business arena as well. You know, especially with this breach that recently happened and I won't, I don't think I should point out names, but, you know, there was a pretty big breach that happened with, uh, you know, a common name that we all know of, uh, you know, everyone's looking twice now saying, you know, geez, uh, you know, is, yeah, are we covered? You know, someone needs to make sure and validate that all these companies that we're taking care of are secure. Absolutely. And, and I've, I've, uh, I've actually talked about that breach a couple of times with some guests recently. And, I'm sure it'll be coming up a lot in the next few weeks just because. Do you guys actually, on your podcast, oh, do you yeah. name the company? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I, I name names, polite. and it's not because I'm I'm trying to be a jerk or, or trying to, like, call them out. But I think, no, it's, it, I, it's, I think it's important that the MSPs that are watching and listening understand what the heck we're talking about. You know? So... Sure. And, and I think it's safe to say everyone knows what we're talking about. You know, that big thing that happened in December, we're sure. still talking about it. So, um, and, there, and we're still learning more. Like, I think we just found out there was like a third or a fourth uh, party involved or attack vector or, or something like that. Like, we're just, it's, it's crazy. Like, I think at this point, we just need to assume we've been breached. Like, that... Russia knows everything about me. They they know I, I just bought new underwear on Amazon. Like they know it all. They know it all. Like <laughs> Yeah, they know it all. And you just you're you're not significant enough for them to do anything about. Or they're waiting for the, you know, the big attack. One of the know, two. when they've got, you know, 10, 10 million yeah. drones. We'll, we'll find out in seven days. I mean <laughs> whatever that means to you oh what is seven days the inauguration or something and, i don't know and, and i'm not even going to say seven. one way or another just whatever that means to you we'll find out in seven days <laughs> i'm not a conspiracy theory person i think that america will have a <laughs> smooth transition i truly fine. hope so i truly do um yeah but holy cow is is it getting intense out there man I'm I'm glad I'm in like a nice, almost rural area. <laughs> like, <laughs> no big cities nearby. Um, I just learned the other day, like cow tipping's not a thing. Who would have known? It's not. It's not. I. Uh... <laughs> that was always when I was growing up in high school. T- cow tipping was a thing. What? Bet. People would say they did it. You know, you'd always have a friend. Yeah, yeah. But did you wow, ever do tipping. it? I was like, what? Okay, so no. I I just had a friend of mine on my podcast, and uh, we talked about cows. He has he has a dairy farm, so it, we didn't talk about like we talked about a little bit of technology for maybe twenty minutes, just with like his his dairy technology. But no, he he explained like you know these things weigh eighteen hundred pounds. They don't sleep standing up. So if you get that close to one and push on it, one of two things are going to happen. One, they're going to run away from you. Two, they're going to plow your ass over. <laughs> so. Well, I, and I, from Florida, I, we see, you know, there's a lot of cattle in Florida. So I do see them laying down. And I always thought about this. Like, they're not standing yeah, they, up sleeping. He said they don't they're sleep down. standing up. He's like, that is a myth. They sleep, they sleep laying down. I'm like, but how do they get back up? He's like, how do you get back up? I'm like, I don't know. It's hard. Like, <laughs> I'm a big guy. <laughs> sometimes I, sometimes I have to get up on all. Sometimes I have to ask for help. 
All right, back to passwords. Back to passwords. All right. Um, all right. So, so we can sell this. We can make a nice, healthy seventy-five percent margin. The price gets even lower as as we scale. Um, is there a minimum? Like, can I just start with one? So you, anybody can come in and do a trial on the product because we want you know we want an MSP to come in and kick the tires, mm -hmm. right? We want you to be happy with the product, use it internal, make sure it works for you, and then we want to get you set up on a, into the partner program where you can start reselling it to customers. And we've got different tiers available. We can ramp you up, you know, depending on where you're at, as far as you know, your distribution and what your time commitment is. We can work with you to get you a plan that meets your budget, but also gets you access to the platform. But it sounds like there is some type of minimum commitment level. We're not. Yeah, there, there's a small. There, there are small minimums based on you know different sizes of uh, MSP. So we can generally find something that's comfortable, uh, both for. The yeah, we're gonna we're gonna want you to do at least a. I guess a minimum of twenty five. Seems reasonable. Users to just so, keep going. so we're talking like twenty five yeah. fifty bucks a month to get started. That's just okay. get started, yeah. Now we're talking numbers that don't scare people. See, that's that's all. That's that's easy. <laughs> all right. So so we can get started at a nice. You can actually get started with Password Boss. I think more cost effectively than you can with DNS Filter. Which is another fantastic product that you should you should be using if you're not, by the way. So uh, for those of you not doing passwords for your clients, you should really consider it, and you should really be looking at Password Boss based on what I've just heard. So we sign up for a trial, a uh, thir thirty day trial, I assume. Yeah, we're, it's a fourteen day trial. Fourteen day. Um, okay. If we end up, you know, running, if you need more time, and we can extend them. It's not a big deal. Um, but you know you're going to know coming in pretty quickly. Like, yeah, this is doing it, right? Sure. You can see that pretty quickly. Do you have any any like migration tools for the people that might be using other products? Yeah, we you can import passwords from you know all the major password managers out there. Awesome. We've got CSV templates from anything else, right? If you've still got them in a spreadsheet, we can handle that too. Okay, and then I'm, I'm sure you got some. Uh, OCR software for the people that just write it down in a notepad and keep it in their pocket, right? <laughs> we have encrypted both. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm I'm liking what I'm hearing. Uh, what what else should people know? I mean, I, like as as weird as this sounds, like I don't I'm not trying to minimize it, but I mean, it, your company seems simple enough that I don't think we need to talk for hours and hours and 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 go over all the complexities it's a password fault guys like <laughs> yeah i can't see that i don't think but that's okay. you know, that's mine so tap on the one that says american yeah, express my... and see that right <laughs> <laughs> just just curious that's all <laughs> yeah, yeah um yeah so uh yeah, there's not a lot to it you're right it, but but it is one of those things where it's amazing how many people don't have some type of vaulting system. Uh, you know, for me, what, you know, it took me a little bit of time putting it, you know, get it all in and get it all organized, you know, took me a weekend. Uh, but once I had it in, it was uh, very happy. Uh, it's been really very, very efficient for me. Uh, I moved since then. And so, you know, I don't know if you ever have moved and you have 80 different, you know, logins uh, across the internet you have to go in and change oh. your address everywhere <laughs> and it, it made it a lot easier for me to go in it's almost like maybe i should just you know do a peel box or something but um but i moved from one location to another and so i had to go into all these different sites and change my uh address uh, from my old one to the new one and password boss made it a lot simpler for me to kind of go in there and rifle through them and change my address all on one weekend so but those type of things, you know, changing a credit card and things like that, you know, those are natural things you have to do. And, you know, you're going to need some type of vaulting system to make yourself more efficient because it's not going away. You know, our identity and our life is is becoming more and more attached to the Internet each and so every true. day. 
so true. So, uh, where where are you based out of these days? Are you, are you down in Florida? Okay. Yeah, you're in Tampa. Steve's in Minnesota. Well, I, you know, you just said from one location to another, right. it was very ominous, and mysterious, and I was like, you know, this, you know, I don't know, maybe maybe you moved to Australia or something. Hawaii, they've no. got the lowest no. uh, COVID no. cases. You, maybe you moved there. Go, uh, you know, I was in Hawaii like uh, a year and a half ago, and it was funny. One of the guys who was like our tour guide or something like that, you know, uh, he said to us, he goes, I moved to the edge of the empire, so I'd get as far and far away from it as I possibly could, but still be in it. <laughs> they called it oh, the wow. edge of the empire. I, I've got a friend, like, she, oh. she moved out to Hawaii for a few years, and she absolutely loved it, you know, lo loved the, the weather and the beaches and, you know, the the military boys and, and all, all that other stuff. Uh, you know, early 20s for her, so it was a good time. But, um, you know, the, the one thing that she couldn't stand was, you know, Hawaii, they don't really, like, have a whole lot on Hawaii when it comes to goods. Like, it all comes from everywhere else. So I think, yeah, I mean, it's so milk island. was like five or six bucks a gallon. You know, gas was, was a lot. Like, everything just cost yeah. a lot of money. And, and you know, people don't think about that type of stuff. And then, um, you know, the same thing, like, I'm, I'm going to say it's the same thing, but it's not because it's an island in Lake Erie, which is not Hawaii, obviously. Uh, it's nowhere close, but it's an island called Putin Bay, and you know, if if you were a, a younger man, David, you would love it there. Um, but you know, it's all the college kids love to go there and party. Uh, you know, if you go during the week, it's a great time with the with the family with the kids. But you don't want to be there with the kids on like Friday night, Saturday night. Um, but you know. Same Sounds like a Great Lakes version of the Canary Islands or something. Pretty much, yeah. So, and, and it's the same thing, though. Like, they're an island. And the extra weird part is, you know, there, there are people that live there year-round, and then the lake freezes over because it's in the Great Lakes. So, you know, it's winter, and then the lake starts freezing over. So then they can't even take the ferry back to Ohio. Well, I say back to I mean, they're Ohio, but you know what I mean. Um, they have to, like, now they have to get on a little plane and spend like a hundred bucks one way just to just to go over and like bring back supplies to to restock up their grocery store and it's not even a grocery store anyone's heard of it's like you know bill's shack of of goods like you know bill bill has like six gallons of milk and if he runs out he runs out it's it's so weird there man <laughs> so so yeah i i suspect um Hawaii is is like Putin Bay, but without ice, and oh, there's a lot more scale. A lot, of, yeah, a, a lot, lot farther, farther away. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a twenty minute ferry ride to Putin Bay. I think it takes a little longer, even by plane, to get to Hawaii. It's it's out there. Is is Hawaii closer to Japan or to us? Is that, uh, I think it's equal distance. That would make sense. Right in the middle. Huh. All right, gentlemen. Is there anything else you want to touch on before we wrap up? Steve? Uh, I guess the one thing I just want to throw out there is that you know most business networks are pretty well secured with everything. I mean, everybody's got a firewall. Everybody's got spam filter. You know, everybody's got the core stuff, but passwords are probably the last unsecured spot on most business networks. And it's arguably the most important to mm -hmm. get secure. Right? It's the new frontier now. It is. And, uh, you know, if you don't take care of it, somebody else is going to. Right? So. Yeah. And I, and that, that's our, our theory, or at least our slogan is, you know, if you're, if you're not going to vault your customer's password, someone else will. Uh, you know, be it LastPass bought, you know, then purchasing LastPass directly or whatever. It's important that an MSP is, you know, it's like anything else. It's like, hey, if I'm going to have a backup system that I have to support, 
I want it to be the one I'm really intimate with, but maybe the one I'm using internally for all my, my small business. Uh, we said, you know, same thing. You want to eat your own dog food. You want to make sure whatever product you're using internally is the same one you're, you know, having your customers use. So and we think since COVID's happened, you know, back 20 years ago, everything used to be behind a firewall, you know, so it wasn't as big a deal, all this password security, right? You're kind of securing yourself from the other employees. That's about it because everything was behind your firewall, you know, and now, you know, with the, you know, advent of the cloud and of course what happened with COVID, you know, all the applications have kind of, I say, evaporated up into the cloud. Uh, And then you have with COVID, all your employees kind of left, you know, they left the firewall. They're outside the firewall now. So we feel like password security has become exponentially more important over the last 10 to 20 years, just because everyone is just going insecure lead to all the different sites that run your business. So now we're saying, hey, let's get that back under control. Mr. MSP, kind of your job to do that for your small business. You know, you, you are the, uh, the seat at the table for all internet and security and things like that. And so it's important to take that role uh, and be that trusted advisor and take care of your small business owners. Very cool. And we have a demo every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 and 2 o'clock. Is that correct, Steve? Sign up for my show. Every 10, 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock every Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday. and Tuesday. So if ten, anyone's ten interested, and three. check it out. Uh, every Tuesday and, every Tuesday and, and Thursday, three? it looks like. Yeah. And you can get to those right from the homepage, passwordboss.com. And I'm just going to make an assumption that Password Boss will work with all of the major browsers, PC and Mac. Technically Linux, too, since Chrome runs on Linux and it's just a Chrome add-on. No, we don't have a, we do not have a standalone uh, Linux app at this point because the architecture of Password Boss is we don't store your passwords in the browser. Right, so they're not stored in a browser extension. They're actually stored in an app. Oh, okay. I like that. So we use the browser, we use the browser extension just to pass the data into the uh, websites, but we don't store it in the browser. I like that a lot. And passwords are back up to the cloud, though, if, if my computer crashes. Yeah, your data is backed up, but it's backed up in an encrypted form. Sure. So we, we can't decrypt it. We can't see it inside. Perfect. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for hopping on here and doing this. Uh, for those of you that have, absolutely, for those of you thank that you have Steve. questions, go to passwordboss.com and uh, check it out. It seems like a really great product. I know some MSPs that are using it today, and I suspect I'm going to know a lot more after they watch this. Thanks, Steve. Absolutely. Take care, everybody. We'll see you at your next Thanks, one. Thanks, Steve. Good day. Bye-bye.